Steam Deck has ventilation here normally, but now we have additional ventilation going all the way up, as well as exactly where the fan is. Okay, so today I'm back with yet another Steam Deck video. So I already have a lot of accessories and, you know, different add-ons and stuff for my Steam Deck. And I was scrolling on Amazon, seeing what budget things might be out there that you guys might be interested in as well. And I think I found just the thing. So this is a Steam Deck, you know, back replacement shell. There's plenty of these online. Some are clear, some are not. But this one's a little different. So this back replacement shell, not only does it have the original vent, it adds ventilation all right here and puts ventilation exactly where the fan is. So theoretically, this shell should increase thermals. And depending on what model you get, give you better cosmetics and make it look a little cooler. So there's camo, clear, black, and smoke black. I just went with the black so that it sort of matched the shell in the front of the Steam Deck. Because I don't plan on changing the front. But they have a bunch of different options for you to choose from. On the clear one especially, you can see how, you know, the fan is exactly where those vents are. So this is my Steam Deck right here, and I have this case on it. And this is pretty much exactly where the fan is. And the extra ventilation here is pretty much exactly behind these holes in the case. So I think even with this case on, we should be able to get some extra ventilation. So yeah, I picked this up off of Amazon, only 25 bucks. So yeah, I just wanted to check this out, see if it was worth it, and uh, install it. So in the box here, we have a couple different things. Let's get all of these bags and boxes and stuff out of the way. Alright, so first of all, we have the shell itself. So the Steam Deck has ventilation here normally. But now we have additional ventilation going all the way up, as well as exactly where the fan is. In addition, we have this metal kickstand. Feels like it's aluminum. It's pretty dense. And it has like 3M adhesive to stick it to the back. But I'm putting a case over this, so I'm not going to use this. Standard little guitar pick, pry tool. It comes with back buttons pre-installed, so you don't have to worry about transferring the ones from your old back. But they even include better grippier ones in the box. So I'll probably be using these ones. So even though it comes with buttons and screws already installed, they include second set of buttons and second set of screws. Speaking of screws, here's all of the screws for the rear shell. They include a full new set. Then in this little baggie here, we have the instructions, which we'll look at in a minute. Screwdriver, which just appears to be a very tiny Phillips screwdriver, and a grand total of 10 finger condoms. I'm not going to be using these because um, I'm not that worried about damaging my Steam Deck. But, you know, more power to you. This is just a cheap driver set on Amazon. I have a much more expensive larger one. But, you know, this is just a little small one, about 10 bucks, And you'll probably have an easier time with something like this and something like this. Alright, so taking a look at the instructions here. It just says, you know, put on your uh, little finger condoms. Uh, here's the English. So put on your finger condoms, remove the shell, use opening picks to take off shell, install a new shell, reinstall screws, and put a kickstand on, which is optional. Alright, big thing to let you guys know before you take apart your Steam Deck, the micro SD card must come out or you will literally snap it taking the back shell off the way that the Steam Deck is designed. So don't try to remove the back shell if you still have micro SD card in there. Can't do that. That is a big no-no. I'm going to put the shell kind of over here off to the side. So first, I think that I'm going to install these aftermarket grippier back buttons. As I mentioned earlier, they include a full button set already screwed in. But they also include another full button set with screws that is just much grippier and much nicer. It is really hard to see, but in the top right there, these are labeled. This is the right side, which, you know, obviously correlates to the right side. Yeah, so just like the piece you're replacing it with, this is just one piece you could pop it right out and uh, keep that for later. I'm going to go ahead and get the other side on. As long as you put the correct side on the correct side, it should be the same process. Alright, so here's a replacement shell. All we've gotten done so far is install the slightly nicer and grippier buttons, but I figured that they'd be much nicer than the smooth ones that come with it and the smooth ones that are already on the Steam Deck. Also, I just realized I made a mistake. See how these ones push out and these ones don't? They're not supposed to, so uh, so if you did like I did, remove them and make sure that they are under this tab here. Alright, so now we're all set and ready to start taking the Steam Deck apart. Here's some brand new screws, I'm hold on to these and stick them up here. Alright, so the first thing that you want to do is power your Steam Deck on from sleep, if it is asleep. And then just immediately shut it down. There's also a way to shut it down to where it won't power on unless there's a charger plugged in, which is much safer. But I mean, you can do it however you want. This is just how I'm doing it, as long as you're safe. 
once your Steam Deck's fully powered off. You can go ahead and pop out your micro SD card if you have one. It's not optional to pop out the micro SD card if you're taking the back off. If you don't, you're going to break the micro SD card because it is literally holding the shell in place. There's my little guy, whole one terabyte. I've gotten a lot of shade for using this card instead of just doing an SSD upgrade. Plenty fast. Can't tell which games are on the onboard storage and which ones aren't. So, oh well. Alright, so we can flip it over to the rear. The case kind of left a mark on here. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. Count them. Now the thing is, the screw here isn't quite the same as the screw here. I believe these four are the same and these four are the same. Don't quote me on that. Just put the screws in the exact holes that they came from. That's your best bit. Alright, so I've gotten all the screws out. The actual bit type is different between some of them on the Steam Deck OLED, I believe. But as far as the original Steam Deck, they're all the exact same Phillips bit. And it goes long screw, long screw, short, 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 long, long. So, remember that. Look at how I have it here. If you're just using the screws that are in the bag and you didn't take note of where they came from. So now you can get a guitar pick or any sort of prying tool and just kind of pry away. The easiest place to get at is going to be right up here, right by the trigger. Alright, so this is my first look at my personal Steam Deck's internals. There we go. There's what the inside of the stock shell looks like, if anyone's wondering. It has some padding there where the battery goes. So this is the sort of revised Steam Deck. I can throw a picture of the other models on screen now. But as far as all these components, they are all basically the same as far as the original Steam Deck. The Steam Deck OLED does have different joystick modules and whatnot. But this is really fascinating how it's all individually replaceable and stuff. Stock Steam Deck Airflow. Upgraded Steam Deck Airflow. You know, which one are you picking? Now obviously I'm not sure if this is going to have any extreme performance impacts. You know, this is one of the things where, you know, just why not? 25 bucks, having a little bit of fun out of it. So, just make sure it's lined up, which, if you just took the other one off, it should be pretty obvious how it goes. Just kind of sit it on there and just snap it all the way around. Shouldn't take a lot of effort, and it should almost go fully back together without the screws. Now it's time for the screws, but as you can see, everything should clip together completely flush, even without the screws in there. Looking super, super good already. Let's just do another comparison again. And I do like how the sort of stock air vents on this one are like the same profile. So, you know, at, at a glance, it looks like an original shell, but then there's just all of this other business going on over here. But I'm going to throw all the screws in real quick and uh, show you guys how it ends up. All right, so we're booted back up, so let me put my case back on. The triangle lines up perfectly with this air vent. The stock air vent lines up with the stock air vent, obviously. But these wings should allow airflow through this new vent as well. And all my games on my SD card are perfectly playable. So nothing wrong with the SD card. Went together very nicely. And that was honestly pretty quick. It'll be cut down in the video. But the actual time, less than 10-20 minutes. Alright, so the Steam Deck upgrade is done. I have it back in the case. So if we flip it over, you can see that the fan is pulling air through the case. And then all of these air vents can pull air through the case as well. Now I know what you're thinking, you just replaced it, it's a brand new one, it's not the original one. Shouldn't be worried about it getting scratched up if you could change it, blah blah blah. I like this case, I like having cases on my things, that's just how I am. So, we're going to rock a case with the new vent shell. I think it looks pretty sick. And let's end off the video with some thermal testing. I unfortunately forgot to get any testing from before. But I do have a video from a while back where I was testing Horizon Zero Dawn in a different video. For cryo utilities, I was testing this game and I had the temperature on screen. And that was with the original shell. So let's just see if it makes any difference or if it just makes you feel cool. Alright, so right now we're in Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm going to put the performance overlay all the way up right there. And so just walking around just a little bit here, just, you know, loading stuff in. So the GPU is settling at about 70, 71 degrees. CPU is about 62 degrees, and it seems to just be staying right around there. Hey, Editing Geek here. So, like I said, I didn't get any benchmarks from before with the other shell, but I did performance test this game for a different video. So if we go over to that right here, we can see that the GPU was about 83 degrees, the CPU was about 72 degrees. So about a 10 degree drop on both CPU and GPU. So I don't know about you guys, but I think that's worth it. So. I'm going to throw up the footage from my cryo utilities testing where I had the temperatures up on screen so that you guys can see if it's any different or if uh, this is just a gimmick.
I won't see that until I'm editing, so I'll probably voice over some stuff. So yeah, that was this $25 back shell for the Steam Deck with, you know, priest ventilation. Don't really know exactly what to call it, it's just replacement back shell, whatever. But I think it was a pretty cool product. I probably didn't make it clear, but I did buy this with my own money. This wasn't sent over or anything. But it was a fun project, and for only 25 bucks, I, you know, more airflow can't hurt it. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you liked the video. And that's all from me. I'm out. Peace.